What's up, everybody? It's your favorite one-thirds, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Reckless Combat from the Three Mighty Warriors set. This is on loan to me from East Coast Toys. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to take a look at it, and the link to their store is in the description if you're interested in buying it. We have to talk about accessories, so we might as well get started now. So he comes with two guns, one for each of you. They are sculpted identically and they are presented identically, which is to say no paint, but decent enough sculpt work. Some hollowness in the handle, but that shouldn't bother you because it just uses like a five millimeter port sort of mechanism in order to attach, which he does just fine, in case you didn't believe me. All right, so let's talk about the figure. Uh, so feeling in hand, it... The, so the plastic actually feels fine to me. It feels a little light, but the plastic feels fine. It's the hardware, it's the joints that feel kind of trashy. So let's talk about them. I like the proportions and stuff. All that stuff works fine for me, the general presentation. There's actually paint on the figure, which blew my mind. But all right. So the head is on. <laughs> let's just take a look. Little ass stools. <laughs> oh my God. They're the same height. Sorry about that. My wife came downstairs and was making fun of the furniture we just bought. So, um, the head is on a ball peg. It's connected from the head into the chest. So, that's where the ball peg is. You get a fair amount of range on it. And then this flap here is on a hinge as well. So, you get a little bit extra up. Not so much down. But it has good down anyway. The face is painted silver. And the eyes are painted blue. So, that's nice. Now, aesthetically, looks a little... Looks a little off. Looks a little wide. Looks a little flat. Like the face. Like it It doesn't look quite right to me. Which is unfortunate. Because I think I like the face. So it's just really the helmet. So I guess theoretically they could one day do a different helmet maybe. I don't know. A little Magneto-esque. Which I don't hate either. Honestly. So on the chest we have this piece. Which that might that's die cast I think. And it's painted. And there's a ball peg up in the center that gets you a, a diaphragm joint, which is nice. So using that, you get a fair bit back. Not a fair bit, but you get a little bit, I think enough, and forward, and the teapot, and a swivel at the waist. So that's all done really well. The shoulders are on, oh, that's interesting. So there, it's a hinge at the shoulder that comes out to a universal joint. This gets a little stuck fit and finish wise. It's not quite right on both sides. But you can get the arms out to a great angle, a little bit past 90 degrees. They're just, they're just a little, they're just tolerance a little poorly. And then you get a swivel that's also a little tight. Looks like it was made of the old fast <laughs> And then you have a bicep swivel. You have an elbow bend. You can extend the biceps to get your full 90 degrees. I should have done that already. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. So maybe it was all fate. So these pieces plug in. This is transformation. This one seems to plug in a bit further than this one. And this one is harder to get out. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But you can get a 90 degree elbow bend on a single hinge. Wrist swivel. Fingers are stuck in this pose, which I don't hate. I don't hate it. It's old school. I'm not mad at it. For the hips, we have hip flaps. They get up and out of the way for universal joints, which gets you a good bit forward, which is really all you need, but not the full Monty. You don't really need the full Monty. I just like saying it. And then this doesn't feel good, but like you see how it's pulling against the ratchet here as I put pressure on it. Can you see that? But you do get the full Van Dam, and they're not toleranced properly. You get a thigh swivel built around the universal. That's fine. Knee on a single hinge that's soft ratcheted that gets you a little shy in 90 degrees. You got some silver paint in there. This piece is die cast and this is painted orange. The oranges don't match, but I don't hate that. I don't hate the little variation. It doesn't really bother me. And then we have tires and they're rubber. And then we have silver painted hubcaps. So that's all nice. And then the feet. Unfortunately, this is a problem. We get an ankle tilt down, ankle tilt up, and you get a heel spur, zero rocker, zero. That's a bummer, and it's not really acceptable, in my opinion, in a masterpiece style figure. And there he is from the back, not hateful. 
size comparison wise, there it is with Huff 2.0. So he's a bit taller. Um, I, I, I think that some of the problems come across in the sculpt, but I think that on the same side that some things do look better. I think that a lot of the sculpting stuff down in here and inside there and some of the paint accents do make that look better. Conversely, I think some of the paint accents on the arms look better. The head sculpt looks better. So I understand the argument here, um, aesthetically anyway. And there he is with a car bot and a mini bot. So that should give you some sort of idea as to where he would scale with your other masterpiece offerings if you weren't contemplating switching out, but instead were considering adding him to your collection to fill that spot. So, so it seems anyway, but they suggest flip this back, flip the head around, close up that section, a little fit and finish issue here as well and flip out these wheels, which we might need our tool. Oh, they're much easier to go in that way. And then once we have them out and around, they're on a slider here. Just slide them to the back. Same on this side and slide them to the back. For the arms, you want to collapse the hand inside. These are a little tricky to get out because there's no tab or anything. You kind of got to get a tool behind there and then collapse the biceps like we showed in the, um, when we we're talking about the figure, but they actually collapse all the way. And then you can untab the sides here. So hands in, bicep and elbow in, untab the sides. Now this is something that the instructions definitely get wrong. So you want to do as I do. Collapse the heels in, swivel the feet around to the opposite side. This one's already been done. I mean, untab these, the shin, the metal shin parts. And then you want to combine our wars. They didn't paint the underside, which is fine, I think. Combine our wars that down and then close this tab back up. Same on this side. And it's, once again, little fit and finish issue. Well, it's a tolerance issue because you got to keep the gray part straight. And then close that and then tab these together. All right, so let's get the backpack sorted. It's on a double hinge. And what you really want to do, the instructions aren't really clear on it, but rock this down. Make sure that your arms are on these sliders here, that they're slid up. And then it's a little tricky, but make sure that it comes down. It'll peg in, and then those two tabs there in the front will peg into the front of the chest. And that's how you compact it, which is, which is actually pretty smart. Then from the back, you can flip down this piece, and that'll peg in to the back of the legs. And then you just have to peg the arms in. Now these flaps are in the instructions because you can have them up when it's in robot mode. But uh, uh, I'll try to show a picture here. But it's not really necessary. Make sure these are collapsed as well as they can be. And then you just, you're supposed to be able to tab them in to the side here of uh, the truck by swiveling the, that one works a lot better than this one. This one, like the elbow won't quite straighten. And then you can flip these up and these can clip on to the uh, the prime trailer the mp10 can clip onto that so that's a nice touch you can adjust these little side mirrors here i'll get them cleaned up we'll take a look at them so there he is and he's kind of a whole lot of fine um i think it's this mat but, but the tolerances are so weird on this thing that it, it might not let me i'm gonna try over here on my table you just have to take my word for it no not really so and it could be that i don't have something quite right because the tolerances are a little funky but I mean, I think it does the job overall. The paint all comes through. There is nice little brake lights there on the back with a metallic red. Like there, there is a lot of little things about this that like you wouldn't expect. Translucent windows, the windshield wipers are sculpted on, not painted. And then down here, we have a little bit of paint and translucent uh, headlights and excuse me, and then the silver grill. So yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's um, I have a lot to talk about here in final thoughts, but it does do this. These wheels spin fine. These are not quite and it just seems like a, a more so a tolerance thing than something i did wrong but i'm willing to to guess it's something i did wrong as well and then we have the same metallic red paint there in the uh, marker lights oh i know what we're missing the tracks l tiger 
Final thoughts. Let's talk about the negatives. And there's a lot. There's fit and finish issues kind of throughout. A lot of it doesn't fit quite right together. A lot of it doesn't move smoothly. Uh, the instructions aren't done exceptionally well uh, in terms of the order of operations, so to speak. And one of my main issues with this guy is the hardware. If the hardware was done better, this would be a much more successful figure. But because there's a lot of soft ratchets and a lot of poor tolerances, like those two things working together really work against this figure and end up making it feel a lot cheaper than you would necessarily expect given the price. Like it ends up feeling an awful lot better than what I would have expected, but because of the joints and because of the tolerances, it ends up kind of leveling out to feel pretty much just as you would expect given the price point. And then I, I'm also, I'm not crazy about the head sculpt. And, and maybe it's not necessarily the face, mind you, but just the overall sculpt in general, how the helmet works with the face. There are some positives though, like he has a fair amount of paint on him given the price point and what you would expect and die cast which makes him feel better than he probably really is plus the rubber tires tons of little paint accents well maybe not tons but a significant amount i think and the engineering once you understand it is pretty straightforward and relatively fun so it's not like there's not good in him much like vader but maybe there's just not enough good in him i don't really feel a hundred percent comfortable in recommending this if it was a single release, but I'm gonna reserve judgment on my recommendations until I get them all reviewed, which we will be doing this week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is my tentative plan. But my overall thoughts thus far is it's better than I expected and still not good enough. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.